You need more training. But you did well. You show promise. With more training, you could defeat Sin. Thank you. But I think you might defeat Sin before I am able to. I cannot. Huh? Or should I say, I was not able to? You mean... Farewell, Yuna. We'll meet again. So, first time players and Tidus in the story have no idea what that exchange just meant. But obviously, us more experienced people will know exactly what Belgamine is all about. But as we as we meet her and find out more about her story, we'll find out just what she was talking about there. Okay. Let's use Tidus here because he was excluded from the previous battle. Make way! Okay, so one of the reasons why I was a little bit underpowered for that battle as well is um, the Aeons increase their stats based on two things. So let's have a quick look. Yeah, Vadafal's dead. Um, okay, so the stats will increase in two ways. One, they will go up as Yuna stats go up. So the more highly you level Yuna, the higher level your Aeons will be. And two, uh, they automatically get a stat boost based on how many random battles you've been in. So I think, don't quote me on this again, it's like 300 or something like that that you can do. So after the 300th uh, random encounter that you do, you will have reached the maximum amount of uh, extra boost you get. I think something like every 30 battles or so you get a boost to, the, um, to your Aeon's stats. So because I haven't spent too much time in random battles and Yuna is still fairly underleveled, that's why Belgamine's Aeons were even stronger than, than normal, so that's why I was unable to defeat her. And obviously messing up the, the shield a bit didn't help either, but it's not that important. But that's nice. So yeah, already you can probably start to tell that there's a lot to do in the post-game. The, the story is, uh, is just the beginning, to be honest. And that's, one of the reason, that's one of the reasons why this game was just was so loved, because it just had so much to do. You could just play it for hundreds of hours. My Lady Summoner! You're a summoner? Yes. My name is Yuna. I'm Callie. Nice to meet you, Callie. Lady Yuna, are you going to bring us the call? Yes. <laughs> Very soon. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> We're looking forward to another calm, my Lady Summoner. I'll do my best. And good luck to your guardians as well. What's the calm? The calm is a time of peace. It comes after a summoner defeats Sin and lasts until Sin reappears. Uh. Huh? Sin dies and is reborn. I get it! I thought it was weird. Yuna's dad defeated Sin ten years ago, right? But Sin's still here. Didn't make much sense till now. Wait, if it just comes back... Don't say it isn't worth it. Because it is. Even for a little while, people can sleep in their beds without being afraid. That kind of time is worth anything. Don't say it isn't worth it. Your words that day, Yuna... I remember them well. I wonder when the um, when the calm finished. So ten years ago they defeated Sin. I wonder when it came back. So as you can see, with the random encounters, the two characters that aren't really of use at the moment are Yuna and Kimari. So you have to kind of go out of your way to, to make sure that they're actually doing something. And these little critters here can uh, can, can 
confuse you, so you need to be careful. Because confusion will cause you to either attack yourself or your allies. And that's not what you want. So yeah, if you don't if you don't include uh, Yuna and Kimari, they will start to fall behind. Waka's back on the field. Take that. By the time you get to the end of the high road. Don't get too cocky. <laughs> it's always got him on a collar. She's that kind of woman. I guess for that reason I'll just keep Yuna in the front line so she can actually do something. Our prayers are with you. Cheers. So the person we didn't talk to was the uh, the third Chocobo Knight, who's uh, actually my favourite. He didn't even get to introduce himself. He's kind of uh, he's not uh, the most outspoken member of the group, and Lucille loves to give him a hard time. Okay, now's a good time to use the magic sphere, since she is the only person that can use magic right now. Or well, black magic. So there you go. Rudu's even more powerful now. Oh yes. See, now the this is the first time we have a, a pretty strong random encounter. 1875, I mean that's pretty significant. So that guy is no pushover, but there is a cheap way to, to get yourself through this battle, and I will show you how. So ordinarily, you know, you can use uh, things like Power Break as well to make your life easier, but Auron doesn't have that much HP, so it's not always uh, useful. Because let's say you go quite far down, let's say you go quite far down the high road and you encounter these guys six or seven times, then Auron's going to run out of MP pretty quickly. So you need to be careful. Let's just make sure everyone gets an attack in here. Oh shit, I can't do it actually. I was going to show you a cheap way to get through this battle, but I can't do it right now. I need to get to a save sphere. I just want to see it do an attack. Okay, that high evasion. Always useful. So yeah, what you can do in this battle, if your Valifor manages to, if your Valifor manages to survive the encounter with uh, Belgamine, then you can summon Valifor. And uh, what happens is these two, so the Jewel Horn and uh, the Wolf enemy, can't attack it. So that's very, very useful because it's a uh, because Valifor is obviously a flyer. It's not going to be able to do damage to it. So it's a free win, basically. There we go. Let's keep moving. <laughs> I like doing this. <laughs> yeah, I can picture myself doing that, actually. If I was in the same position. See, now we have two slow people on the field. Let's see what this does. Oh shit, you just confused as well. So, here we go. Uh, let's say it wasn't Yuna on the field and it was another slow character, then basically these enemies would have all got... These enemies would have all got two turns each. So, that's why it's, uh, it's better to have your quicker characters on the front line. Especially at the early stage. Okay, let's uh, let's summon Ifrit and uh, show him off a little bit while we can. Also, a quick note: uh, you notice that Yuna got confused on the first hit, but then uh, she got a physical hit and she recovered. So, if you don't want to use items, you can just uh, do a physical hit on whoever's been confused, and they'll be you basically knock knock some sense back into them. So I was lucky there, because if she remained confused, then everyone would have got a second turn. Will you help us? 
and Yuna would have probably died. Okay, so calling this guy is a smart move here because uh, this one has fire based attacks and that's going to heal if it. So while you try and take down the others, this little guy will continue to help you. Boom. So it's a pretty powerful attack. It has a higher damage constant than, uh, than the regular attack. And like I said, it doesn't miss either. So it also has that going for it. But if you notice, there's a, there's a dark pink bar next to the second S. And you notice that disappears. So again, that's proof that this is a higher rank attack. And it will be more difficult to... Um, to get turns in. And that one did a lot less damage than the previous one, so as you can see, it can go critical as well. So. Okay. I think Meteor Strike should still... It's not fire-based, it's uh, strength-based as far as I know. Yep. So yeah, if you find yourself struggling on the Mihen High Road, if you get a bomb encounter, just uh, call out Ifrit, because uh, it's highly unlikely that Ifrit's going to die in those situations. And if you only get ground-based uh, attackers, like the, the Wolf and the Jewel Horn, then uh, go ahead and call Valifor, because those two will keep you alive. Okay, managed to do it in three without it having to self-destruct. Because uh, if it self-destructs, you won't get the AP points. So you want to make sure you defeat it in three turns. So yeah, every now and again it's good to summon, because that way Yuna gets to earn some experience as well. This is actually even better than what Belgamino gave us. As you can see. Extra nice. Let's have a look. Oh, actually, hold on. I might as well use a... Uh, I'll use the HP Sphere on Yuna. Because it takes a while for her HP to, to climb. Much better. And obviously the, the plus 10 uh, thing that she has on her armor will be much more useful as your HP goes up. Oren's had two HP boosts already. Okay. What was this again? Okay. I guess of all of the the um, the extract abilities that you have, extract ability might be the only one that you're actually interested in. As you can see, I've only got one. So it tends to be the slightly more difficult enemies that drop ability spheres, so that might be the only one that you might be interested in, in getting. So yeah, there you go, look, Ifrit's HP jumped up in a big way. So it's always in your best interest. If you want to use your Aeons, it's in your best interest to, to keep you in the battles as well, to increase her sphere levels. Okay, there you go. That's the effect that that one has. Back in the fray. I think it only lasts for one turn. And like confusion, if uh, if this enemy here rams Auron on the next move, Auron will wake up, even if it was meant to continue for longer. Whoa, 600. <laughs> so the only other character other than Auron that has piercing as a default is Kimari. So you're going to want to, if Auron's out of commission, you want to do that. Is there something in here, or...? No, I think it's just the empty area. Shit, I have my slowest uh, people out there. I need to remember to swap them. 
So the second time Lulu got attacked, the um, the sleep didn't work, so it kind of counteracted itself. Oren has shitty accuracy, so he's not a reliable guy to use for these. Enough. Even though it did work that time. But in general, you don't want to bother using him. Let's swap those two out. Because they're my heaviest hitters, I like to keep them out there, but... You want to... Let's have a look at agility. 10, 13, 9, 6, 5. So these three are the ones with the highest agility. Okay. Don't think I've spoken to this guy yet. Now that was a, a nice drop. So where's the nearest level 1? It's going to be over here. And all that's going to do is unlock a couple of extra things that are fairly useful. But most of the major locks, so to head to someone else's portion of the sphere grid, they're going to be much higher level locks. Level 1 is for more small time stuff. And I think uh, for Kimari, anyway, I think Kimari is the person that will benefit most. Because most of these are going to be level 1 locks to head into someone else's sphere grid. So look, already if I just take him down here... Unlock this, I can get him to use black magic if I if I wish. Okay, so here again you basically call hey, me out. I'm a guardian now, so watch out. <laughs> okay, tough guy. It'll be a smart move to, to use Ifrit for this encounter, but so everyone gets experience points, I'm gonna quickly rotate round here, give everyone a turn, and then I can come in and just get Ifrit to, to take everyone out. Is that everyone? I think so. Allow me. Nope, sorry Lulu. Yuna's got this one. Let me help. So yeah, while I'm doing this, this might take a little while, I should talk about um, something that not very many Final Fantasy X players will know, but it's something that can make a difference, especially if you're interested in uh, challenging type things. Uh, the bomb enemies in this game, they drop weapons that have a higher damage constant than all the other weapons. Now what does this mean? Uh, usually the damage constant is 16, but the, the weapons dropped by these guys are damage constant 18, so it has like 12.5% more damage potential than the other ones. And if you do, for example, something like a Kimari only challenge, then uh, I think for that challenge, especially Kimari only, own sphere grid, that kind of stuff is very useful. So, again, for regular playthroughs, it's pretty much irrelevant, but it's there, it exists, and uh, if it interests you, then feel free to farm these guys for a bomb dropped weapon. But yeah, might have to skip ahead here because it's going to take ages. Okay, a couple minutes later, the final blow. And that's the last time I'm going to be doing that. <laughs> oh, damn, I've got two equipments, but they're both, um, both armors. Damn it. Please take one, and it gives me four. Maybe it's a pack, who knows. Okay, her agility is now tied with Titus. Um, extract power. Again, unnecessary. Just a waste of places to move. This is good. Actually, hold on. I might want to head back here for these, uh, these few ones. And then... Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff there, actually. I might as well just head back to that. And then I can come back down to get the stuff on the other side. So yeah, that's why Kimari's a little bit weird. I'm going to head up and, and get these first. And then I'll come back down for this, and hopefully... Then I might move on to this bit, actually. Yeah, I might do that. Okay.
Okay, let's check out those, um, see if any of them are useful. Hold on. I swear... Did I read it wrong? Oh shit, it was an arm guard, okay. Um, might as well. Okay, let's move on. 